Breakers pounding on the rock-bound coast. A constant wind blowing up from Fundy. Always the sound of surf in the ears, the taste of salt on the tongue, and the peculiar cleanliness of sea air. This is the land the Acadians, English, Irish, Germans, and Scots have come to call their own. The early French built Louisbourg, once the New World's strongest fortress. Then the British came. Now nothing remains but a few green mounds high above the sea. The early French fishermen settled in villages of little white houses, snuggling in the coves of Cape Breton, far away from what is now the thriving port of Halifax. The men and women of this land of Acadia preserve many of their old ways and customs. Their skill in spinning and rug making and the charm of their designs have made Acadian women famous far and wide for their hooked rugs. These brilliant patterns have reached many a fine collection. Orchards surge into a foam of blossom every spring in the Annapolis Valley, where Pierre Martin planted the first apple seed in 1633. The old dikes still hold back the sea where the French Acadians, once expelled by the British, later came back and settled again in this land, even though the fates had decided that Acadia would no longer be French. Lunenburg is German by blood, but completely British by conviction. For over 200 years, its men have divided their time between fishing, farming, and shipbuilding. Along this shore, you see innumerable well-fed oxen, hauling lumber to the busy wharves and carrying away dried cod, the livelihood of Lunenburg. The large cargoes of fish and the hard-working, happy people, with the vigor of the sea about them, give the clean little town an air of prosperity. A community of fishermen takes pride in its ships. These men have built the fastest blue-nosed schooners afloat and have sent them out full sail against the dawn. They can well be proud of their large fleet of schooners fishing off the banks of Newfoundland every summer. You is for the Union Jack, that's the man's head, and we is for the waves which over our head. W is for the wheel, we will all take our time. The other three letters I can get to rhyme. X is the letter, our ship gives no grace, and Y is for the autos, the all time to brace. Z is for the sink one, the bottom, you know. The Scots have claimed this misty country for their own and have fixed on it their ways, keeping their traditions, their proud self-respect, and their devotion to the church. The pastors and priests preserve the ancient poetic language. The Gaelic is still used in the home and in the churches by thousands of Cape Breton Scots like these. The psalms, sung to old Gallic tunes by the presenter with responding choir, once heard, can never be forgotten. <laughs> From the moment of their landing, these Scots built schools and insisted on educating their children well. Many of these Cape Breton children speak and sing only Gaelic until they come to school.
Ever since the landing of the early Scots on the good ship Hector in 1773, the bagpipe has been the typical instrument of New Scotland. In the beautiful farming country of Cape Breton, old Angus MacDonald pipes the familiar tunes, cheering his neighbors while they harvest their fall crops. It is said that the first piper in the New World was a stowaway on the Hector, the Mayflower of Canadian history, who paid for his passage by piping the passengers across the Atlantic. The Caledonian Games are held every year at Antigonish, a town of Scottish Catholics. A piper's competition, races, athletic games, and the strenuous Highland fling delight the hard-working Scots and bring back memories of the old country. Their love of the bagpipe and Highland fling is as strong here as in the Scottish Highlands. Near the busy port of Sydney on Cape Breton, the coal mines flourish. Miners go down miles under the sea for the coal to be used to smelt the iron ore from Newfoundland. As long ago as 1720, the coal mines were opened to keep the builders of Fort Lewisburg warm. In the evening, they enjoy Scottish tunes and dances. Rhythmic old Gaelic songs turn the work of shrinking the homespun into gaiety at the milling frolic. In this rugged land of blue lakes and heather barrens, these sturdy, thrifty people with their fierce love of liberty found a new Scotland where their spirit of democracy could flourish and prosper. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 